where we're looking at out of considerations in a COVID-19 world. And today I'm joined by my colleague Callum Owens, and where we look at the implications of COVID-19 for auditors. Um, we're going to look at the implications, what's changed from an auditing perspective, how audits are conducted due to restrictions in, in, in terms of lockdown and now post-lockdown social distancing. And then to, to look at, well, how can auditors and what do auditors need to do here? Well, it's about adapting our standard audit procedures to get the result. And you see, one of the problems here is there's no section in the auditing standards that provides for, well, in a COVID world, there's reduced requirement to audit. So when forming audit opinions, we need to fully comply with the auditing framework. And so we've broken down our session today into five separate parts and Colin will introduce those in a couple of minutes. Um, but the first thing I want you to do is, I want you to download the handouts for today's session. Um, so for those of you who are joining us live in Zoom, who pre-registered and are in Zoom with us, if you go down to the chat box down below, um, Jonathan has just put up the link to all the handouts. Now, we have a significant number of handouts today. Um, Colin has massively over-delivered here. He has um, an overall COVID-19 audit checklist. He has other planning memos. He has going concern checklists. He's got a lot of material here. So definitely get the downloads today. And um, if you're live with the Zoom with us, um, down to the chat box. If you're watching in Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever you're watching, Jonathan will also have put a link up in the comment box so you can download and um, so you can download the slides. And um, as we go through the session, and um, as we go through the session, please do ask us questions no matter where you are. Obviously, those in the Zoom room with us um, who are claiming verifiable the CPD. Um, you will be able to ask either in the chat box or the q a if you're watching off one of the live streaming platforms and um, if you just put the com uh, put the question your question in the comment box and um, it shows up for us in here and we can see and we will answer please do ask questions as we go through and um, colin is um, like myself um, a former institute reviewer he was a quality control officer um, for um, one of the irish institutes he's a, a, a significant amount of experience doing file reviews, and uh, Colin and myself welcome and encourage any questions that you may have. Just throw them out at us. We're fairly confident that we will be able to answer them um, and give you the support and guidance. So we've broken down our five, uh, our five uh, core topic areas which Colin was going to introduce. We have left some time for Q&A, but ask the questions as we progress through and we will, we will answer them. So Colin, first of all, before we get stuck into the material, Perhaps you could introduce yourself, your background, and why people should listen to you and why people should specifically pay attention to today's webinar. Thanks, Des. Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, I'm a, I'm a qualified chartered accountant. Um, prior to join, prior to join yourself, uh, as you said, I was I spent I spent six years as a as a as a quality review monitor for 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 chartered uh, chartered in Ireland. And um, so you know over over that period of time, I would have seen you know we I would have focused mainly on 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 audit file reviews from all sides of firms. So from big four all the way down to you know to to the one man bands all practitioners from you know multinational PLCs um you know or multi multi country PLCs to you know the mom and pop uh, small small audits. So hopefully I, I, I've a, I've a, I've a breath of experience there. Prior to that, I I I trained I trained in practice um, you know uh, uh, small to medium sized firms. Again, seeing the bed and the, the bed and butter audits that that firms are are grappling at at the at the moment today. Like I think. I know I haven't I haven't counted the weeks. I've, I've, I've tried not to count the weeks, but are we 14, 12, 14, 16 weeks into this? Um, so, you know, COVID-19 has had a massive impact. Um, and funny enough that we're only we're only starting to see um, the, the, the impact actually on the ground in audits because we're starting the final reviews are starting to come through. They're they're December year ends, they're January ends, February ends. So we're actually starting to see the live files that are coming through. So 
we're really seeing the problems that firms are grappling with from, you know, well, how do I address these things? And the questions we're getting through Knowledge Hub, the questions we're getting through all the, the webinars are all focused on, well, look, for real practical problems. As in, you know, the big thing is stock takes and then it's impairment and then it's just general, well, how am I going to address my file? Like, as you said, there's no section in, in any of the standards that says COVID-19, how do you deal with it? Yeah, it kind of... It didn't want to put a count number on the weeks, but I suppose since the 17th of March, yeah. the role has shifted and changed substantially. Um, obviously, you continue to provide the query support services. You continue to do the file reviews as required. You continue to, 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 give, to, to give the answers. But a lot of what you've been doing, Colin, for the last 14 weeks now is answering questions. And I suppose my understanding of today's session is you're taking the key questions that are being asked again and again and again by auditors, and you're giving your answers based on what you've seen practically, technical applications of standards, but still with your institute reviewer hat on, what are the reviewers going to be looking on files? And um, since the file reviews started back, coming back into the door, and um, you are getting great insights in the files you're seeing. So maybe Colin, if you want to start on the slides yeah. and just show us the five topic areas that you've focused on for today's session. Uh, I hope you can all see that now. So, um, clear. There we are. So it's actually four. Sorry, Des, it's only four. So, so, uh, so a bit, a bit more time for Q and A. And uh, look, you know, really, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover off. You know, on you know. These are the things, these are the key things that are kind of coming up. So you've got, you know, COVID-19 has thrown up unusual fee, unusual independence and ethical issues, and that probably probably were there, but have now kind of really surfaced up, up you know, come up to the top. You know, we can spend hours on all these things. I know it's a bit of a, a nerd thing, but like um, key planning issues, I'm not going to go to every single one of them, but they're there. Execution issues, and that's where we kind of we are. And then, you know, you know, probably, probably your favorite bit, Des, is, 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 the, is, the, uh, is the opinion forming and how COVID-19, they're suddenly trying to recover a little idiosyncrasies and, and kind of almost like things that don't tie up. But COVID-19 has thrown these up now. So we, we want to have a quick look at that as well. Like, you know, I know, I, I know we've only the hour, but we'll, we'll get through it. By way of introduction, obviously, the FRC now, in fairness, in fairness to them, they've been at the forefront of, of, of issuing COVID-19 guidance. They've been fairly on the ball from, 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 from probably the middle of February onwards. They've been throwing things out there. And as what you said here, Des, like, you know, you know, their concern is our concern. It's probably all the, all, all the regulators' concern is that the current situation shouldn't be undermining any kind of the, 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 the delivery of high quality audits. And um, like they're, they're re, they were re-emphasizing even from the start that like the odds should comply fully with the standards. Now I put in the no exceptions bit, okay? So that didn't come from the FRC. But again, the same thing, like there, like there is no get out clause, okay, I'm doing a COVID-19 audit and I cut corners or can I miss this or miss that? They are all pushing basically that like it's full standards, you know, you got to work around it, this is the way it is. Um, and and what, they were, what they were saying at the time and it probably is that look, you know, and, and you'd be Des, you'd be a great one for this as well, is slow the whole thing down. So what they're saying is like, you know, you're gonna realize there's gonna be more time required required for the audits. So you, you need to you need to bear that in mind when you're talking to your clients and you're shifting your deadlines because you know there's issues uh, or that there, there, there could be issues that, that, that you never in, envisaged as part of it. But they did highlight the, 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 the big, the key areas, okay, so the ISO 500, obviously, you know, appropriate audit, audit evidence, that comes out, that comes through the entire se session today. I know there's issues over component auditors, we probably won't cover that. Go concern, big ticket item. Um, you know, go concern is, 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 is an issue, you know, locally and then globally, like the global markets, the global, the global, um, the global pandemic, pandemic, and how it is, it's impacting, you know, locally on the ground. From a going concern perspective, Colm, let's be honest and, and, and let's be realistic here. Um, there's a lot of economic commentators are talking about a V-shaped recovery and um, the COVID-19 is kind of just going to be like an extended Christmas period. Um, now, obviously, the global economic response and the stimulus packages here have been significant and swift. So there has been some protection of the economy, but we're facing into a pan-pression. So going concern 
and everything that goes with going concern, which includes property valuations, impairments, and we're, we're, we're back into a situation where um, going concern is going to be front and center, not just in opinion forming, but from the outset of every engagement, as well as the standards the column is highlighting here. Yeah, very much so. Like, and, and, and we'll touch on that as we go through it as well. Um, of the, the issue then of the of uh, ISA three thirty so the, so disclosures. Now I know I think I think I think Mike was on there previously regarding financial reporting. Again, that's becoming a big thing. You know, our our approach maybe belt and braces. You know, if it's if it's required to be disclosed, get it in there. You know, you, you want to cover yourself in terms of in terms of the adequacy of, 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 of your disclosures because it's either three thirty. That's what you'll be pinged. That's what you'll be pinged on, or that's what you'll be that's what you'll be you'll be looked at in, in terms of have you have you disclosed appropriately the impact of, of COVID nineteen. And, and just in a general point here, Colm, ISA 330, the changes to the auditing standards, uh, which became effective for periods, periods ending 30th of June 2017, the latest um, FRC uh, version of the Clarity ISAs, there was a new emphasis, a new focus within those standards that were revised now four or five years ago, but the standards we're working off, there was an increased emphasis on disclosures and disclosures made by management. Um, obviously, for large companies, full FRS 102 sets of financial statements for financial statements being prepared under full FRS 102. You have the added requirement of disclosures of significant management judgments and estimates. But per, irrespective of COVID, this is a hot topic for the reviewers, and this is a problem area that we're encountering on files. On a, on a daily basis, and then and, and the last point, basically, is and we will touch on this as we go along. Obviously, it's three one, uh, either three one five and three thirty. You know, COVID nineteen is, is evolving daily at this stage now. Um, and in terms of you know how are you, how is that impacting on your on your on a plan, your on planning memo, your risk assessment? Have you done one a couple of months ago? You've got to go back and uh, and uh, and reassess it. It is an ever evolving. It's a, it's a living, breathing document, unfortunately. And um, that's kind of where, where they were coming on. So really, to, to, to jump into where we are, so the, the first topic, independence issues. What's coming up here now, like, is, is the, all the areas around fee issues. You know, so there's a pressure there to, to you know, to reduce fees, naturally enough. From, from an independence and ethical issues is, 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 is the point down there, the third point there. Is the level of fees, the downward pressure on fees, creating a self, a, creating a self-interest threat? So you've got to, you, you know, you've got to, you've got to work, you know, you've got to bear that in mind that you know your, your clients probably asking you to do more they're facing the financial difficulties they're asking you to do more work without more fees um, and then from a, from a reviewer's point of view while probably while, probably probably can't say it out loud on a, on a visit but the last point there is the low level of fees you know resulting in the difficulty to carry out the work so is there a correlation between the poor files and the, and, the, and, the, and the lack of the level of fees being charged. Um, Historically, Colin, larger audits, larger firms, this low fee impacting on the quality of the work hasn't necessarily manifested itself. But definitely we see it all the time in SME auditors, SME firms, smaller audits. Um, I just want to, to touch on one point there, Colin. Um, the, the pressure to carry out additional work for little or no additional fees this is a brief overview. What we're covering in today's session is, I said to Colm, let's give huge value um, in this. This is part of, this condensed seminar today is part of our eight hour complete audit workshop where we go through all of the standards and deal with all the issues. But the pressure to carry out additional work for little or no additional fees. Coronavirus has changed everything. You're going to see it in today's one hour webinar, but you'd also see it in our eight hour audit workshop. Things have shifted and changed. There's going to be more time, more cost. Are you ethically impaired by not amending your fee to address that increased workload? Yeah, and I and, and, and a couple of slides there further on there about, about, about non audit services and look overdue fees again. Like, you know, this is always like these are always been there, all these issues have all been there, but COVID 19 has kind of pushed them up. 
up, up to up to really you know to, to be to be to be a, to be a, a, a potential impact and um, like in terms of terms of like you know there's always been the there's always been the always been the requirement like you know of not starting next year's orders until last year's fee has either been settled or there's some kind of some kind of play, uh, some kind of um, um um agreement in place you know the issue is where not where not an over and a material now we're talking about material overdue fees here like you know a, a material overdue fee could equate to a loan. So again, you're 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 going into, into stuff where potentially firms never even dreamt they were going um, pre-COVID nineteen. But now we're in a situation where okay, look, we're all under pressure here. Um, so look again, it's it is not for me, Colin, to start talking about uh, the overdue fee issue with my with my profit pro hat on. Yeah. It should never ever ever arise. But practically, it does arise, and practically, yeah. it is a COVID nineteen problem. And, and, and like this goes back to the, like the, the, the point that the point that you be pushing the profit pro in terms of like you know the pressure to sign all 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 the reports in order to issue a fee and get paid. But the last point there you're pushing this obviously is is interim progress fees a simple a simple way out. Like you don't have to issue the final accounts, but you can issue a draft accounts which are which are fee. Does does the fee dependence in terms of having to issue your audit fee cause a self interest threat? That's just again firms are grappling are kind of grappling with that and then the easy, easy way out issue your progress fee. And um, then in, in terms in terms of the non audit services kind of coming there from the from from the from one of the last points you know firms have been asked to do you know additional work additional services so raising funds you know application of government support uh, the UK the furlough scheme various things like that you know they're they're providing staff additional bookkeeping all the social distancing. Uh, lockdown, everything is caught is causing dishes. Again, it's come back to are you doing it? Are you doing it for nothing? Now that's a different that's uh, probably outside the scope of this uh, webinar. But the issue is that because of you're doing that, is this going to cause a threat to your independence? Are you are, are you is it is it is it suddenly becoming a management threat now? And uh, where beforehand it wouldn't. Um, you know, so from 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 the from the files from 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 reviewing files it needs to be bla it needs to be you know black and white there that you're not carrying out a management function there's evidence of management making decisions even in the current lockdown even in the current social distancing and 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 and, um, and social isolation periods that that you're doing that are is there evidence are there, are 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 there minutes of breakfast meetings in terms of ver various things like that and one of the things, Colin, that we touched on um, in our webinar with Edward Rands a few weeks ago, and um, when, when Edward was on, we were talking about, uh, we went into independence and ethical threats in more detail, and Edward talked specifically about the secondment of team members, that despite the fact that new ethical standards don't kick in yet, that, that, that this secondment issue now is a real is a real. Yeah. Problem. Exactly, and, and like obviously, and, and like COVID nineteen do, doesn't particularly help that. And then, and then you've got your your standard, your like your non audit services. Your it's a self review, a self interest threat. Like the interesting is is applying, if, is the is the work you're doing apply, helping your client apply for extra funding or whatever? Will those would that be used to help pay your fees? So does that have an impact on a self-review threat? That's kind of just it's it's these things that are kind of cropping up that may not have cropped up um kind of previously. And so it, it's just and then I, I was just gonna step in there, you, you dropped out a bit, but you came back. Um yeah, and, and read that, and then it just it's just it's you know in terms of everything, ensuring that your safeguards are in place. You've got a, a, you know separate teams to, if, if it's possible, peer review, the passy, various safeguards that just kind of need to be in there. But and and, the, and there will be there will be more attention paid to this definitely on file reviews in terms in, in, across the board, like you know. Uh, Colin, those auditors who are on with us, and I assume everybody who's on with us is an auditor. Um, it would be a strange choice of CPD if you weren't if you weren't a registered auditor to listen to us to um, talk about auditing. Um, but as auditors, you will have heard this a million times, and you're going to hear it a million times more. The biggest issue for me, Colin, with the ethical, the acceptance continuance, the independence and ethical issues on the file, it's not whether the auditor is entitled to accept the engagement or not. It's the documentation of the threats 
the safeguards, the decision making and the conclusion is consistently the biggest issue that we see on files. And you use your checklists and checklists are great and audit programs are great, but it requires you to come off the fence and actually say, here's our threats, here's the issue, document and assess in our professional opinion, these, so these are the safeguards, these are appropriate, this is what we've done, here's why we have accepted this audit. 100% and, 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 like, and it would routinely come up, I'd say, every single file I look at, every single file, uh, without doubt, I'll, I'll raise something around independence and, and ethical issues. Um, the last couple of points really not to kind of look at, just, just to bear in mind, potential over, issues over long association, mainly for bigger firms, I think because of, you know, lockdown, self-isolation, maybe those, unfortunately, those older partners maybe who are self-isolating or whatever, um, you know, issues over that kind of thing, and then just communication with management, you know, key issues a, 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 across the board. And then, then moving on to planning issues, like, we, here, the key eyes is here are, are, are there 300, 315, 240, 250, and, and, and 330. Like, in, 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 ter in terms of them, you know, you spend an entire day probably going through each, each individual one. But really, kind of like the, in terms of 300 and 315, the realization is there is that, is that the planned order approach is, has changed. Like, you know, in, in terms of you've, you've the, the impact of COVID nineteen has to be in, in 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 included in your in your in your audit planning. You may have started your audit planning maybe in January or February or pre. If you're if you're on December you're end and you're on on the ball, you've probably done some planning in November and December. You're now coming back to it after after getting out of uh, lockdown. You need to go back and revise everything because everything has everything hasn't everything's changed so much. You've got revision of your audit risks. You've highlighted your audit risks in November the seventh based on last year's file and based on. At the period we're now six months in probably in, in peak season for for signing off december year ends you know have you gone back and revisited revisited your your um your risk assessment have you have you revised your risks so do some of them apply do some of them more ones apply you've got impairment you've got goal concern you've got subsequent events you've got um laws and regulations, all the ones we're going to go through these are now coming up as real big time COVID 19 risks ha has your plan a memo caught up and what we're seeing basically in the final reviews is they haven't they put a little two-liner at the back of the final saying we've assessed COVID-19 you're kind of going that's not going to the, dif the difficulty here Colin so let's say I'm starting an audit today oh, the, that, entire, yeah. the entire planning section of the file needs to be adjusted to reflect the COVID-19 impacts um, and, and we do have a sample um, audit planning memo in the handouts for you but then the, really what Colin was speaking to probably wrapped up at this stage but it was a significant issue um, in the early stages of COVID-19 where planning was started in January, February, March before COVID was really an issue and then the, the audit file was being finalised. This is going to require you to go back and rework it to reassess from scratch. This is a requirement of ISA 300. Yeah, exactly, and 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 like you're, it's a, it's your planning has now become become a um, an evolving kind of living, breathing animal, unfortunately, and it has become an animal in in, in uh, on certain orders because it's just constantly evolving. The big thing I think I think it's going to come down to is really understanding internal controls. So we've all been in lockdown, um, in very in very shape or forms. There's been you know um, social distancing, COVID, you know, um, all 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 those issues. So whether or not whether or not your understanding of your controls um, need to be updated. Has been a breakdown of controls? Has been a segregation of, of you know, issues over segregation of duties? And, and, and in terms of those things. And then is that going to impact on your evaluation of design and, and implementation of controls and your walkthrough testing? And I think that's, and that's an, another area I would be routinely paying firms on is, okay, look, how have you evaluated the design and implementation of internal controls? Yeah, there's people, the pushback is, well, we're doing a, a substantive audit. It isn't a controls testing. There's a requirement under, under, under 315 to do some kind, of, some kind of testing. How have you done your water testing if you haven't, got, if you, if you haven't been able to get, get on site? Um, you know, so it's, that's kind of where you're kind of looking at over 31, you know, 300 and 315 kind of... Um, Fraud is, is going to be an issue. You know, it's, it's, there's going to be a heightened risk of fraud. 
we're already seeing. Yeah, it. Yeah. I'll give you a heightened risk of fraud, Colin. <laughs> there is already a heightened incidence of fraud. Um, what is what I say now? Heightened risk of fraud. It's happening, and um, fraud is reaction. Once COVID nineteen landed, um, all sorts of fraudulent activities um, manifested themselves. And, and I, you know, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting comments and queries from clients about, well, look, you know, they've been potentially, you know, a, a potential fraud attempt, and all of that's coming back down to, of course, the fraudsters knowing that there is potential pandemic controls because of 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 um, of, of, of COVID nineteen. Whereas the same condition of duties aren't 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 uh, aren't perfect anymore. We're all working from home. As you can see I'm working from my kitchen at the moment. So, you know, we're, we're all working from home. So they're, they're making they're making um hey at that. So, you know, from a, from a, from an auditor's point of view, that needs to be tied in. So it goes back to professional skepticism uh, uh, by the 240. You'll see that coming through all the eyes that professional skepticism and challenging of ma uh, managers' judgments and estimates. Big time going concern, their estimates, impairment of assets, very things like that. Um and then you know, a couple, a couple of small points probably on, on, on two fifty. You know, it's, it's, it, there's going to be a requirement. There's going to be an, an increased focus from, say, reviewers, the likes of me, and um, looking at what additional work you've done for non-compliance of laws and regs. Now, you know, laws and regs can, can, can is, is the, the entire account and gambit from your standard, you know, companies acts. You know, uh, FS102 to basically, you know, uh, you know, obviously in, in the UK you've got the, you know, the 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 furlough scheme, all the and, and, and all the additional government supports that are there. So how has that impacted on the flash statements in terms of okay, so there, these are new and changed laws and regs. So have you considered that as part of your risk assessment? You know, have they appropriately complied? How are you going to test that uh, as part of your as part of your audit? And then in terms of whether or not you know, I, um, there's, there's additional reporting, uh, re reporting requirements to any re regulatory bodies. And have they taken on board COVID-19 and say, well, look, we're going to push some of, the, some of the filing deadlines, push some of the reporting deadlines, because we know there, there's issues over sign-offs, getting access to books and records. Is that there? You know, you just got to bear that in mind, cover yourself by doing, if you need to contact the regulatory authority, do it. Be proactive as opposed to saying, well, look, we can't do anything. And, and you as you as auditor can make direct contact. And um, for the most part, Colin, probably it's going to be the auditor urging the client to make contact to get clarification. And the auditor coming in on the dialogue or conversation to clarify the status and issue. And um, if the regulatory authority invites you into that dialogue. Exactly, exactly, um, and then and then and then three 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 thirty is kind of is kind of where it's at. Like in terms of you know you you've now done your risks, you've done your risk assessments. You're now you're now looking at whether or not you need to go back and, and re and, and re look and re look at your risks, and, and because because it's it, it's a, it's an ongoing an ongoing situation. And there's just a real practical issue I want to bring in here, Colm. And the practical issue I want to introduce is that for so many years, um, efficiency in auditing is using the information, data, layout, and even working papers from previous years and rolling them forward. Part of the real problem here in terms of IC330 is that the audit from 2019 is not of relevant. We can't, we can't roll forward the templates, and obviously we shouldn't be using templates, but we can't roll forward the templates in the same way as we could before, because ISO 330, your risk responses, ISO 315, your risk assessment, but ISO 330, your risk responses, changes the structure, nature, and focus of your audit file. Now, what we've done with our audit files is, rather than totally updating every single working paper, we've introduced an overlay audit pack um, that you can, you can upgrade your existing audit. So in a post-COVID world, 2021, 2022, that, that we do the COVID work now and maybe next year to probably carry over, but then we can go back to our standard audit approach and response. Yeah, and that's and, and that's one of our handouts as well there, just that, with the, the, the checklist, that overview checklist. The, the thing to take from this one is, listen, you know, you're gonna have to, at some stage you're going to have to use alternative audit procedures, but what really needs to be documented in the file, I mean, really documented in the file, is how you've assessed the sufficiency, the, 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 the sufficiency and how much you can place reliance 
the reliability on it in terms of you need to you need, you need to assess or need to understand that basically maybe your 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 alternative procedures aren't as robust as if you were doing normal other procedures but you just need to document um, the risk of, of the quality and the reliability of the evidence and just address it in, in terms of it um, and then and then look the, 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 there's going to be a greater focus on, on on the closing process so we're looking at you know journal adjustments and other adjustments you know uh, how you've how you've addressed that the next point the the uh, auditor's overall presentation of the financial statements and your conclusion goes back to your point there in the start of it, your conclusion on whether appropriate sufficient all evidence has been obtained. That's the key to the whole thing that underpins the entire thing. How have you concluded on based on, 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 on all the issues there? On on 330, I think we've spoken about this. This is this is where firms are dinged on and all the time. And it's where we would pick up checklists as in how have you audited the financial statements are and the disclosures. 3.3 still applies. There's going to be a huge emphasis on COVID-19. You've mentioned there previously, all the individual ISAs have a big emphasis on disclosures, disclosures, disclosures. This all wraps it up into one. You've got to provide perform sufficient audit procedures to evaluate whether overall pres presentation, including disclosures, is in accordance with the financial framework. How are you going to evidence that on your file? And it's going to be the last. It's going to be the last point. It's your checklists. And, and you see, Colm, I, I I hate to tell experienced auditors how to suck eggs, but there's a, an underlying problem here, and and the underlying problem is this: the the key requirement of ISO three thirty, the audit procedures to evaluate the financial statements. That sometimes that link is just not strong enough on the files. And now, if we look at a COVID time, in a COVID time. There's multiple disclosure changes required under FRS 102, Section 1A of FRS 102. Whatever financial reporting framework you're using, there's additional disclosures. You need to be able to go from old school, and um, here's my financial statements, here's my disclosures. Where does each disclosure and, and each piece of information in the financial statements tie into a file where I have a working paper, where I've gathered the evidence to demonstrate that I've obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to that disclosure? And, and, and you said it there. But many of you were, were, were with us when Mike and myself went through the financial reporting piece. But th this whole integral link and um, what COVID-19 has done in terms of the, the disclosure requirements, it's really pushed the requirement here for auditors to get into that nitty gritty. Colin. And a key word you mentioned there is demonstrate. And, and like so demo and document, like my three favorite words is documentation, documentation, documentation. You know. And in this case, how can you demonstrate to a third party, i.e. a reviewer, that you've actually done this? And it's your checklists. It's, you know, don't tell me if, if, if you know, I, I, I'm soft, a bit, a bit softer now maybe, but don't tell me you're using a, 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 a financial reporting package. To me, as a reviewer, that's grand. They're not perfect. You need something else to dovetail with it. Either, either pro formas like the, the ones that that um, the Mike went through, or or, or specific COVID nineteen checklists. Um, kind of moving on, so that's kind of covered off. I know it's kind of a whistle stop tour of, of planning, but you know, execution issues. What are we looking at? We're looking at, at the key, the key, you know, the key eyes is here. You know, documentation versus evidence. It's always going there, you know, 501, specifically focusing on stock takes, really, to be honest, that's what we're looking at. Subsequent events and written reps, the probably the slides are all there, probably the, the, the point on, rep, on written representations, I'd probably easily sum it up in one or two words. You can't rely on them, as in, it's great to have them in there, but if you're if that's your only piece of audit, audit evidence, you, you've got, you've you've probably got a problem um, in terms of like, so have them there, but you, you can't rely 100% on them. And here, let's just close off my tuppence word on ISA 580 and representations column when you're there. The key thing for me in relation to representations is we have our file, we have our evidence, but the tailoring of the representations, it's not just, you know, a letter of engagement is effectively, and again, you can't template ISA and audit, but a letter of engagement effectively is a template. It's ISA 210. This is what you got to say. ISA 580 letters of representation are not. They should be tailored. And in a COVID audit, they absolutely need to be tailored because there's additional specific representations required that's not going to be in your standard template letter of rep. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And like you know, coming with coming off two thirty and five hundred, like you know, like they're 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 twins basically. Like you know, because we you know, if it isn't if it, if it isn't one, it's the other. You know, and 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 this it comes down to it comes through the entire presentation. You know, how have you evidence that you it's sufficient appropriate all the evidence? Um. So you know, and you know, you 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 need to bear in mind you've got restrictions on travel movement, getting on client sites. Now I know we're coming out of lockdown, so it's getting slightly easier, but. I'm talking, I'm talking to firms on a daily basis. They're still working from home. They're still social distancing. They're a bit uneasy about going on client, on, 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 on client, on client sites, getting access to, access to client, client, client staff and clients themselves. And they're, they're genuinely looking at alternative order procedures. You know, in, in, in terms of working around or, you know, getting access to files, you know, um, access, access to websites so, or to, to, to servers. So it is, it is still, is, it is still an, an issue over, you know, getting getting your all all in evidence um so the requirement is still there 500 is still there you've got to document the basis of assessment of the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence and you need to recognize that whatever evidence you're looking at the quality and the reliability in COVID-19 unfortunately may be lower and how are you going to basically get around that how are you going to address that you need to document at least your, your consideration. We all know, you know, we're looking at a file that's going to be given to a third party. You need to document, you need to document these things. And in your, look, it comes back to your planning here about, you know, what items are absolutely vital to test. You know, can you get away with not testing them until until a later time, until after lockdown, if you're ext if you're if you're extending the period a period of your audit, or can you get through alter alternative means? And then look. The last point there, I'm going to come on to in, in 501, you know, there's time, time critical procedures. So really we're looking at stock takes. Um, like, and like, that's probably the, the most time critical item. Um, and I think like, you know, it's, it's the, and the, I think the, the, the second point there is also, is, is, is really important, is how are you going to find your, your final assembly of your file? Okay, so you've got the, you've got the 60 days there, but, you need to realize, recognize that you know you may not get through that within within that period. So how are you going to how are you going to uh, go to go, go to close it down? You know you know getting the files from from staff members to 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 reviewers and back and forth. So you know we're all new we're all using we're all using Zoom. I think some of are, are are zoomed out, but we're all using Zoom. You know we're using a, di a different type of, of of techniques to get this done. But you know it it, it needs to be a part of your planning. You need to bear that in mind, and then. And then the last two points will probably come on to the, the, the last section about, about the audit report. You know, we're talking about here about, you know, about, you know, the, the, a delay in doing the work because of COVID-19 for, for, for no one, for, for no one, no one's at fault here. But if you feel you need to, if you feel you need to extend your, extend your timetable to allow for the extra time, you need to factor that in immediately. So you need to go to management and say, look, we need extra time. And if they're unwilling to, if they're unwilling to give you the extra time, you need to consider whether or not that is, how does that impact on your audit? And how does that impact on your audit report in terms of, you know, is that, is, is that going to be a limitation of scope imposed by management? And would that, would that, would that impact on the, on the audit opinion that, 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 that you're going to issue? Um, uh, and then, when, we sorry. Look, when we come to ISA 705, that's obviously critical. Um, in terms of the management imposed limitation and scope, we can't really afford to have a management imposed limitation and scope because if a management imposed limitation and scope is both material and pervasive, well then the knock-on effect on the audit opinion is that you potentially are in a situation where you should not form an audit opinion. This is an actual requirement, I think it's paragraphs 11 and 12 of ISA um, 705, but th the reality is clients and boards who are pushing through audits, we need them finished, we need them finished, we need them signed off, they're potentially imposing a limitation in scope by not giving sufficient time to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence. So this is quite an unusual circumstances and even the last recession, it didn't manifest itself in the same way because it, 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 it wasn't like coronavirus where everything just stopped overnight. It was more of a gradual process whereas we've had a standstill here. Exactly. Yeah, and I think you know, it's probably, and like probably this slide probably covers off on on really the areas that you're go, you're going to run up against in in terms in terms of COVID nineteen. Like 
you know, you've got you've you've obviously got the got impairment of assets. You've got fair value issues because you know you you know um, market values. Um, you know, in in, ter- in 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 terms of actually getting reliable market information, that ties into you know, into 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 value and use calculations. We're all based. These are all we're all looking at all 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 at evidence issues here. You got goal concern and projections. Your depreciation, your carrying value. Again, it all ties up to impairment. You've got recover, recoverability of debtors. You know, you know, have have they? Is it a COVID nineteen issue that the, that that you have a bad debt, or is it a general kind of a, a general trading issue? Um, stock and working program and provisions and, and provisions there and provisional accruals. Um, I think the next slide basically is. I think this this is. I I, I have I, I have blagged from Mike, so I, I I give Mike credit for this now. But this really is. This has been. It's been jumped back into the forefront again, and um, all these all these decision points here. This is really coming from a, a financial reporting perspective. But what I've what I what I've brought in here here is why, at all these junctures, there's a, a, a decision to be made, and at all these junctures, if there's a decision to be made by uh, by uh, the, the the client, the auditor has to audit it. So in terms of indicators of impairment. You know justification why there is why there are none or why there are the carrying value compared to recoverable amount you know fair value value in use and and then and then your 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 impairment loss or or, or no impairment in all these junctures there's obviously a judgment to be made and a documentation of that particular judgment i think mean, that's something i you know for her impairment that's where basically reviewers are, are going to be looking at that that the, the, this is the key the key document that if you have that on your file that you've that that, that, that you've worked through and justified it you should cover yourself off um cover just a couple of points really on 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 on, on stock on, on 501 Five, 501 has always been there you know, I, I was I was quite amazed at, at the at the at the at the panic auditors had about, about stock when when COVID nineteen kicked in. In terms of stock, then suddenly became such a a, a, a massive issue. And um, five hundred one was always there, and five hundred one always gave gave um, assistance to auditors in terms of um, how to how to how to address um, stock takes where it was it, it was impractical impractical. Um, I know I know. Um, Institute in Scotland and Wales have done a very good paper on base on 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 the issues over stock takes and what and what they're kind of coming down to basically is is this thing here alternative procedures you know the 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 issue over over an impractical um, uh, not attending a stock take because it's not practical was always there and and there would have been always issues you know from time to time coming up but I think the issue of you need to document why you can't just say I'm not going. And put your hands up. If there has to be some issues, and then you've got to basically put in your put in your alter, al, al, alternative procedures. And, and their paper, and you know, and, and our consideration came all down to here. Can you do a virtual stock take? Um, can you do rollback procedures? You know, review and assessment of, of, of systems and controls. Goes back to the, the issue of the planning. Um, you know, and your and your and your do. How can you evaluate the design and implementation of controls? Can you do your walk through walk through testing of controls? And you do cut-off testing, your analytical review, and, and your, your use of an internal internal auditor or an expert. All of these things, you use separately or in conjunction, hopefully give you some kind of comfort over over stock. Like we're only talking about the existence and the condition of stock. We're not talking about anything else. It's because we can't get on site at a particular day in the year to do a particular stock take. So, you know, if I one has always been there, just to go back to the old, go back to your teaching days and 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 have a look at it um and then you know really you know 560 in terms of you know we probably do, uh, might have probably got, uh, done this to death in terms of subsequent events you know section, section 32 from an frs 102 percent. yeah exactly and i think i think probably probably the only the only point i would say that is be the last point here you know while while we're saying or while, while we're saying obviously is is slow the whole process down but the flip side to the slowing it down is the last point here. So if you're shifting your your reporting deadline, so you're gonna you're gonna be increasing the risk from from identifying subsequent events from from occurring at the you know between the date of the flash, between the year end date and the date of the order date of the order report. 
that period of the, if you're going to shift your deadline, that period is going to extend. So you have, you have more of a risk that, that things will fall into that period that you need to assess for adjusting, non-adjusting, that you need to do a lot more work around, around that subsequent event. So you need to balance up whether or not, you know, signing off the oil, oil report immediately with whatever risk that that takes in, in, in that brings in to basically um, slowing it down and having a, a longer period between year end and sign off, which which throws up so, you know issues over over subsequent events and 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 the like like that. Um, I think I think we probably covered off on this and this and then five eighty five eighty we have covered off on 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 reps. So really the last kind of, the last kind of session is basically on on a, on opinion forming. Key thing basically is you know you've got five seventy go and concern and then and then you've got your then you've got your uh, your 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 seven hundred ISIS your you know forming obviously the the the. You know, the, the starting point is 700, and then your modifications and your efforts and manner paragraphs. Look, in, ter in, ter in terms of goal and goal concern, we know where, the, where this is kind of going to, in terms of, you know, the assessment of whether COVID-19 has materially impacted or is likely to materially impact on the auditor's evaluation of managers' assessment of goal and concern. You know, what's your ability to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence? Um, and like you know, we started. I know we like fully enough. We're, we're ending with going concern. We started with going concern. You know, it's it's dealing with uncertainties around around as a consequence of of, of COVID nineteen. There is a heightened risk. Is it, it are, are they local? Are, are they local issues, or are are we having here a global uncertainty and and you know a, you know global global economic outlook and how that's going to impact on on going, on going concern. Yeah, you see, Colin, like the, the, the global economic uncertainty, the worldwide e economic outlook, it doesn't in any way reduce responsibility for the directors in making their disclosures, the directors in making their assessment, and their auditor forming their opinion. The global economic uncertainty is here. And again, unlike the last recession, if we go back to 2008, 2009, and that financial crisis, it wasn't global. If we go back to September 9-11, the state of New York shut down, but the rest of America and the rest of the world, although on a restricted basis, got on with their business. Here, we have everybody shutting down, um, and the, the, the knock-on consequences can't even be identified yet, um, but then you very much got on an entity-by-entity -entity basis. Obviously, some entities are thriving through coronavirus, and um, other entities are not doing so well. Yeah, and I think I think like, and like like you know the thing the thing firms the things orders need to need to bear in mind you know it's twelve months from the, from, from, from the approval of the first statements like we're looking into into twenty twenty one at this stage like you like come in normal in normal terms you're looking forward and there's uncertainty and you put your best estimates your best assumptions to build cash flow projections. But right now, signing off on an audit opinion, who knows? And you see, the who knows piece, this is critical that this is dis disclosed in the notes to the financial statements and that the working papers back up this who knows bit as people decide, is it a material uncertainty paragraph? Is it just a disclosure and an unmodified paragraph? What is it that we're actually putting in place here? Exactly, and I, I th and I think Mike made Mike made a very good point actually on the on on the auto workshop, as in like you know there's there's either going to be someone who's going to be directors are going to be you know brutally you know negative negative negative. There's guys going to be there who are going to be totally totally positive, and the reality is somewhere in between. And I think and I and I think this and I, and it's to get it's to get that in between area is is really is really what the key is and the expectation under 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 the new eyes of 570 is there's going to be a lot more expect the expectation is a lot more extensive work around going concern and and the files the you know even if covid 19 wasn't here there was still there was still be an expectation of more work regarding going concern more work challenging management estimates and the judgments but going concern with with covid 19 it's going to be a massive, uh, a massive amount, and it all comes down to evaluating whether sufficient appropriate audit evidence has been obtained, supporting managers' use of goal and concern. I think I, I, I think that's going to be key. So the file, you know, if you had nothing else on your file and you had, you know, a, an inch thick goal concern, you probably could, you know, you, you know, you've covered yourself and always a, a, a bit tongue in cheek. But that's 
like that's where you're going. Like that's where like, that'd be the first bit I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look, go and concern, where have you gone? Brilliant. You can do an order that be out like but Yeah, but, 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 but hold on, but hold on. Colin made a little bit of a joke out of that, folks. But Colin is a reviewer, and obviously all reviewers are different, all institutes are different. But our experience of ICAST, ACCA, ICAW, all the institutes that we work with and all the institutes we do files, there's a commonality in terms of the approach of the reviewers. And Colin just gave you a flash insight there. He's gotten in trouble for doing this before. Hope he won't get in trouble today. But Colin is saying, well, I'm reviewing a coronavirus file. What am I going to zone in on first? Well, I'm going to go look at going concern. I'm going to look at the financial statements and see how they dealt with going concern. Then I'm going to go into the file and see how they dealt with going concern and look at his reaction. His reaction was, if they can get this big issue right, well, chances are that they're, 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 they're immediately a level of judgment around the quality of the rest of the file. And I'm not reducing audit files to a game, but when, yeah, it, comes, no, no. <laughs> when it comes to monitoring, there is an element of a game here that you need to play. Of course, everybody complies with the auditing standards, but what's the biggest judgment point? It is when we are reviewed as part of our monitoring business. Yeah, and I think, and I get dead right. Like you know, it is you know, monetary visits are basically on, on, on you know, folk, on, you know, big ticket items, credibility reviews, what ties in, big ticket items. If they get there, those rights. Well, look, you know, I think I I I I, I think the quality is there. Um, and again, I think I think we spoke about this about you know considering the the, the, the appropriateness of using the goal concern basis and whether or not um um it, it's it's appropriate and then and then the very the various kind of kind of disclosures. So. 700. Okay, so we're here. We'll come to kind of towards the end. So, you know, have you you need to report. You can't you can't report. You can't date your audit report until you've got sufficient appropriate oh, evidence. Colin, before we go on any further, and before we go any further, and in the downloads, we do have an ISA five seventy going concern checklist, uh, which basically brings you down to all the requirements of ISA five seventy in the context of COVID nineteen. And Colin has also created for you a going concern um, flow chart. Um, now, we do have our broader opinion builder, um, but this is a going concern flow chart to help people make decisions around going concern. Um, we get this question every week, folks, but I have the question here again. Um, yes, these webinars are free. Um, we're, we're running a free um, sort of webinar series and we kicked off in back in April. We're running it May, June, July, August. And we could possibly launch our paid service in um, September. But right now they're free. And um, so if you register, and perhaps Jonathan can put the link up um, in the chat box for anybody who wants to register to get notified. And um, you can watch them here on LinkedIn. You can watch them in our free Facebook group, the Profit Pro Accountants for Growth Facebook group. And um, if you want to get verified CPD, um, you need to attend here in Zoom and we will be able to give um, verified CPD certificates for anybody who watches them here in Zoom. Um, so Jonathan, if you can put up the tab or the link um, for where people can register um, for um, the sessions. And um, by all means, in VS, invite your friends, invite your colleagues and um, bring them in here into the group. Um, I think we've over 300 UK accountants now registered to uh, watch either the live or the recorded versions of our CPD. So it's free for anybody to join. Colin, back to you, ISA 700. Yeah, um, and like, you know, it's, it, it, it goes back to all what you've been saying from the, from the start. You know, you, can, obviously you can't sign off until you've got sufficient probability audit evidence. How do you get that? It's 500, it, documentation is, is 230. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it is, it, it does all tie in. And, um, you know, and I think the point is, is I think this slide probably, probably tie, ties it up. Like there, like there, there was a reluctance to sign off until you got clear, clear sight of, of, of uncertainties. What are we ever going to get clear sight? You know, and then you know, just to watch out for the, you know, the the, the shifting deadlines. But I, what I do want to cover off is basically is seven oh six because this is the interesting one because. This is COVID nineteen is throwing up so many things. Like you know, you've got five seventy on goal concerns. You can have a material, material uncertainty on related to goal concerners. You've now got the, the FRC have come down saying, look, you've got like what are going to impact on your audit report? Okay, five seventy goal concern. You're going to have modified seven hundred five modified audit reports. But then they've thrown this in seven hundred six in terms of okay, well look, you might you know you might have something. Which is of such fundamental importance to the user under, under understanding that you can drop in an emphasis matter paragraph. 
um, where it has significant, significant financial effect and created uncertainty, as long as it has appropriate disclosed in financial statements. What are we looking at? We're looking at uncertainty over estimates. Go and concern, um, you know, in terms of a, if it's if it's if it's if it's a, a go if it's still fine, and then things like impairment, uncertainty around repairment issues. So, you know, it's it's a it's a seven oh six, and it's. But the, the, the emphasis, the emphasis of matter paragraphs. So, so obviously we've got our material uncertainty in relation to going concern, and um, we used to have emphasis of matters in relation to going concern. Now they're material uncertainty paragraphs. But if you go back to the global recession, like the emphasis of matter paragraph was the ultimate utility opinion because it covers off on such a magnitude of events. And um, you know, if you look at it, like limitations in scope due to a lack of other evidence. They trigger a whole different thought process, a whole different reaction, and qualified and, and, and adverse opinions, and you know, qualified at a lower level. Well, if something is material, just journal it and fix it. Adverse, you know, it, it's but emphasis and matters are everywhere, and you know, your file from planning, execution, the individual sections as you move through your disclosures. The disclosures and the notes to the financial statements, the, the, the drafting of the opinion. Do you know one of the big issues that I have practically with our adult opinions column? One of the big issues that I have is sometimes the only place I see the disclosures and the opinion itself is in the financial statements. That's not practical. If I'm an auditor sitting back, I'm going to draft up disclosures. The directors are going to provide us with disclosures for larger entities, but for the most part, the auditor drafts up the disclosures. Here's how this ties into my opinion. And, the, and, the, and emphasis matters are going to be huge. They're already huge in what we're seeing in terms of opinion forming. And like, you know, from a, you know, and, and, and that's exactly it. Like in terms of, the, like there's no, like firms are showing up on, on, on files I would have looked at, you know, with Omnipro and, you know, in my, in my previous role, firms go from A, to Z, they jumped from one, from the beginning to the end. They haven't gone through the process. And I coming up with stage, well, like, I don't know how you've got to you've got to your conclusion because there's nothing on the file to say, look, this is my thought process. Even if they use even if they use the Army Pro opinion builder and they draw a line through us, that's great. It's 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 a starting point. But at all at every juncture, you need to document why you went this way as opposed to that way. And that's the that's the ultimate way of of of, of working out your own opinion. Now, just on one last slide, you know, the seven oh six is you know, you it shouldn't replace a modification. Okay, so we're not saying you know you know you're saying it's the, the great utility belt, but you know if if you need to modify, you need to modify. Okay, and if it's a material uncertainty, you got to get it in there. But if it it it, it you can so we potentially we're looking at. But um, material uncertainty rate to go concern paragraphs and if the matter paragraphs in the same audit report because there's other significant uncertainties relating there, as in, you know, you know, there are issues over impairments, issues over estimates that are of such importance that need to go in there. So we're we're looking at, at a world of value, massively different um audit reports. Um, and this comes back to your point there, Jez. You gotta document the thought process because if I'm a reviewer coming in and kind of going, I look at this, the, the accounts go, yeah, great, it's there. Where else is in the file? Where's your thought process? Where's your basis of opinion? Where's the reasons for putting all these things in the financial statements? And where's your where's your 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 evaluation of the disclosures and the various things like that? Um, and and no. one, just one, just one rule of thumb here, and um, one rule of thumb is so you could have a material uncertainty in relation to going concern. You could have a material uncertainty in relation to going concern and perhaps an emphasis of matter in relation to asset valuation. If you find yourself going down the route of more than two emphasis of matters or a material uncertainty and an emphasis of matter, uh, not always, but I'm suggesting that if you're finding yourself go down that route, you're probably verging on a disclaimer of opinion due to multiple significant uncertainties. So we tend to try and keep it to two if you're going this route. Okay, so so Colin, just for the last two minutes, and um, obviously you've the, the slides, the material from today, you've given a huge amount of material, huge amount of value, and Colin and myself are going to do a eight-hour audit workshop 
a, a dedicated UK eight hour audit workshop where we bring you through everything that we've covered today, but also all the rest of the standards in more detail. So keep an eye out for that eight hour UK audit workshop. Colin, in the meantime, um, where's the best place for people to find you, to contact you, if they have questions in relation to audit, if they want file reviews done, all of our work is done remotely, electronically, so um, geographic boundaries or the Irish Sea doesn't impact. Doesn't where's, matter. The where's the best place for, for, for UK accountants to contact you, Colin? What's your email address? Email, it's c, -O -C owens at armypro.ie. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to put that and I'm so, just going to put that into the chat C, box. So C O W E N S at omnipro.ie. Or sure, like if you if you if you if you if you email if you email the um the 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 general omnipro omnipro uh, uh, email address, it'll get to me. Don't worry, it'll get to me. Um, um, Jr. Jr. has put up um, in the comment boxes where you can register for the full webinar series, the full free webinar series, and you can register there. JR has that in the chat box. And if you are just with us today and you haven't registered for the full series, you can do so if you have a friend, colleague, or peer. Anybody who attends the webinar through Zoom, and if you have registered for the series and you attend the webinar through Zoom, and you will automatically get your CPD certificate of attendance. Folks, thank you very much for joining us here today. If you're here with us live on any of the platforms, and um, thank you for your time and attention. I know a lot of you watch the recordings of these sessions in your own time. For those of you who are watching the recordings, uh, thank you very much for your attention and your time also. To Colm JR and the entire webinar team, I just want to uh, thank you for your input. Um, and folks, I will see you again next Tuesday. Let's get it done.